right, ready? Yes. Ready. My husband said, she was barefoot again. She was barefoot. I keep talking to her about going out of her car with no shoes and socks on. I'm like, honey, you're just gonna need to let that go. I've gone without shoes. I'm going to one-up you. I've gone into the office oh, once no, with no, undergarment. No, I, yeah, I will one-up you. And she looked at me and she said, you need to get your life together. <laughs> what else would someone be able to look in, a, in just an instant and say, you need to get your life together? If anybody that knows my story, it comes. I come from a very long line of brokenness, addiction. But then when I boil down to what's the root, it's identity. What that has looked like for me and my husband is actually doing hard things. Nobody else gets, gets to define if you're enough. That That isn't even, the definition of that isn't even up for debate. All right, ready? Yes. Ready. So let's just jump into um, typical Monday morning at your house and the girls getting ready for school. So girl moms here. <laughs> right, all right, girls. All teenagers yes. Yes. in the house. T tell me, describe any five minutes of your Monday morning before oh. school. What are some okay. things that are said from your daughter? So, or, so something oh. that's coming for you that is actually, you're gonna realize at first you're gonna be like, oh, and that's, that's gonna last for five seconds. You're gonna be like, ah, <laughs> is when your children start driving. <gasps> yeah, we're, because, we're one year away. Because the twins now drive. So they drive themselves to school, which is, at first you have that kind of like, Oh, I'm I'm nervous, and Scared then to oh, death, I, we, but now I don't get to take you to school anymore. And then you're like, <laughs> now I don't have to take you to school <laughs> anymore. And you have this I'll like quickly it flips. <laughs> oh. So that is incredible, and that is still coming for you. Yeah. So, and then our youngest Sadie is in a tutorial, so she actually only goes to school on Tuesday and Thursday, and she homeschools. So our chaos is Gracie and Bella. All, Bella is always late. Gracie is always. Sorry if you're watching this. I'm outing you. Um, Gracie I'm, is always I'm yelling always at Bella because Bella is always late right. and Bella is always running out of the house to their car without her, sh her shoes and socks in her hand, <laughs> bare feet. Every day, every day just this morning, my husband said, she was barefoot again. She was barefoot. I keep talking to her about going out of her car with no shoes and socks on. I'm like, honey, you're just going to need to let that go. And then the struggle is going, Sadie, you have to do your homework. Sadie, you have to do Sadie, Sadie, oh Sadie, you have to get out of bed now. So. That's our Monday morning. So That's getting out of bed, yeah. putting the socks and shoes on yes. before they go out the yes. door. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So a couple of years ago, my husband started taking the girls in the mornings because it's kind of like on his way to work. Yes. So it changed my mornings where like before I always had to be up. I always had to be helping yes. make breakfast and lunch. And now like they kind of do it themselves, yes. which feels very strange to be waking up at like... 6.45 right. and having only like 20, 30 minutes before they leave versus waking up at six and having to do the yes. whole like yeah, yeah. process. But I do, I find now what happens though is that because I wake up a little bit later, they're then like suddenly offended right. that I, like what, what, why didn't you get up earlier to help me with my hair? And why didn't you do <laughs> this? And I'm like, you didn't ask. I, like, I, 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 I didn't, didn't know. know. I, I would have gladly done have. that. <laughs> so we we're still learning, like the the you know the expectations of like you know right. at at seven o five when they have to leave at seven fifteen. Can you French yes. braid my hair? And you're like, well, and you're like I, I, no. You should have no. <laughs> that yeah, like, me. and is it yes. mom? Do you want me? Do you need yes. me? Are you too much? Are you too? Oh, right? that's hard. Like, yes. Yeah, because sometimes they're like so thrilled that you made their lunch, and then yes. other times they're so offended right. that you made right. their I lunch. Don't. Like I, I didn't need that. Yeah, I don't I want that. I need that. Need that. Today. Okay, Did but you know? isn't it a gift when you realize though that okay now that your husband's taking them that you don't have to get actually presentable to take them to school? Yes, because. Uh, real facts, I have yeah. been known to show up at their school. Actually, this this morning, oh, my hair was wet and it was in a oh, turban yes. and I drove <laughs> Olivia to school. Okay. And I've gone without shoes. I'm going to one-up you. I've gone into the office oh, once no, without no, undergarment. No. I, yeah, I will one-up you. Um, oh, we're getting close. No I, no bra? I, I will, yeah, no bra. I, no, I will one-up you. And Lolita. I had, no, I, had no, I had no bra. I had no pants. Wait, what? <gasps> I had a long sleep shirt on. This is only women that's hearing this, win. right? Praise the Lord. You win. I had a I long sleep shirt on. Like, worse. <laughs> I had a long sleep shirt on, and I just always knew that I'd drive up in the drop off, yes. and nobody comes to the window. That's You're right. Like, Love you. Bye. Hi. And we were very late that day. Mm -hmm. No shoes, no socks. My husband's always like, what if you break down? I'm like, I'm not, nothing's <gasps> happening. I'm like, whatever. I have a long sleep shirt on. I have no pants, no bra, no nothing. And this teacher's <laughs> no like, shoes. Natalie, 
see that waving me down. I'm like, I can't stop because you're going to come up to my window and you're going to see that I'm basically half naked. I can't stop. I'm like, oh, she's like, Natalie. Now she's screaming. I'm like, rolling to my window halfway. Like, I really can't have a conversation right now. She's Thank God like, for tinted windows. She's like, I have 10 coming. Uh, no, I have six coming with you. And I said, coming with me where? Uh -uh. She goes, today's the field trip to the Children's <gasps> Museum. And I said, huh? Huh? She goes to you signed up to drive. I said, huh? <laughs> I said, I don't know when we're leaving, but I'll be right back. I have never sped faster in my entire. I've called my husband. I'm like, pull clothes out of my closet. He's like, I've been trying to tell you. I don't know where Bella gets it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, you win. I have no idea. But I somehow made it back and drove six children to the Children's Museum that day. So. That's a that, that's a that's really good. I mean, that's real. Like that's real we're life. just all trying that's, to make. We're just it all work. trying to make it, everyone. We're trying to make it. I thought my one day when I went to junior high, and I was wearing overhaul overalls, yeah. and I forgot to put a bra, and I didn't realize it until PE class. I thought that was a win, but no, I thank you. <laughs> But you're like, you're undressing and you're like, you're like oh, oh, wait, oh, oh, no. Ew. Yeah. And I don't think Weepy. I knew because I had like the, you know what I'm saying? Like oh, you yes. had the overalls yeah. on. You don't pay attention. Accident. Hers was a choice. <laughs> <laughs> but I am as equally guilty. Yes. I know. Actually, I, mean, I know is, that you would. It this is what weird. happened to you. It did. It, it, and it, I did have to go in the front yes. office and I'll never forget Lolita was the Hi, like, because I loved her. And she looked at me and she said, you need to get your life together. <laughs> and she was the funniest lady. I loved her. But it was as, it was as perfect together. as an older woman could yeah. say with truth, just looking at you and going, you need to get your life together. You need to fix I like her already. I know. She was my favorite. <laughs> okay. What else would someone be able to look in, a, in just an instant mm. and say, you need to get your life together? My or maybe closet. you felt my, that way. Yeah. My closet. My closet. It, a tornado. It's a tornado. Has gone That's off. That's not true. I've seen your That's closet. That's because you were coming. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That's because you were coming. I, but I've tried. I've given up. Is it shoes in a mix match? Yeah, well, is for it... me, it's usually an unpacked suitcase okay. because you kind of are like, what's the mm -hmm. point? You're just going to pack it again. And that's like, honestly, when you realize that you have enough time off from touring that you can put your suitcase away, that is a, that is a <laughs> life moment that you rejoice over. So... It is my closet, not my room, which Your I know because if I, I, I'm it's so hypocritical because I really get on my kids about their room. And I was just going to ask it's you. So, it's so hypocritical, but it's really just my closet yeah. and it's really because of touring. And then I think the drawer, like there's, everyone has the drawer is in the kitchen. Is there a junk drawer? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. There's several. And I, and, I, and I organize it, and it Same. never lasts. My husband always is like, organized. how are you the most organized, unorganized human I've ever met? It, he has, you have same. a bin for everything, and nothing ever makes same. it to it. Same, <laughs> same, <laughs> same. So yeah. those would be the, yeah. you need to get your life Mine together. is not because of touring. I just, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't lifelong. Life. It's, just, it's just life. No matter what I do, it's, it's life. every, and I say to myself every week, hope. You did this last week. How are we here again? Like, I know it's coming and I can't break the cycle. So if someone has a great uh, piece of advice for how to break the cycle of always having a messy house or a messy closet, that'd be great. All right. So chore. Is there a household wow. chore outside of cleaning the junk drawer or cleaning your closet? Folding socks. Like, you don't even have to finish that sentence. Folding socks. I literally despise folding socks. Just laundry in general. Yeah. I, well, this is the strange thing. I actually enjoy <gasps> doing laundry. What? I, I, Why? There is such a satisfaction in making it smell good and making oh, it clean. Okay. But folding the laundry. So All the laundry I will or just do the it. socks? Any. Mostly the laundry, but socks. I, I, I don't understand, and I'm the only one in my house where my socks always match. At the end, I go, yeah, you guys, match. it is possible. Yeah, there match. are, there yeah, are, yeah, yeah. I put two socks in and but two our kids, socks they came don't out. Care. But our kids no. and my husband, they don't care. I'll be like, why are there 17 one-off socks yeah, yeah, here yeah. at the end of this laundry load? I don't understand it because you wore two socks. Where did the other <laughs> sock go? <laughs> so now if you actually went into my husband's closet at this moment, you would see a pile of unput together socks because yeah. I don't do them anymore. I've actually either. resigned from folding socks. I 
drop Equip. all the socks yeah. and even I gave like all job. the just random stuff. It goes in a basket in the hall in between their bedrooms. And I'm so like, go, figure it see? out. Because I, I don't want to waste my time doing this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the worst though is when you've, okay, this, I think every mom will relate to this. It's early in the morning. You have a busy day, but you know you have to throw a load in. So you throw that load in, yes. you come home, you switch it out, you throw in the second load. And then you get busy with all the other stuff and you forget about it till that moment right before you go to bed. Yes. And there's wet clothes and now you have to like go hang them up or dry them. And you're just like, why did I do this yes. to myself? Why yes. didn't I just like wait till the next yes. day? But I notoriously leave like a late night load for myself. And I've no one to blame but myself. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that probably like, I grate my own yes. nerve. <laughs> I grate my own nerve. I grate my own nerve. <laughs> okay. Favorite. Is there a place in your house that's your favorite place? And it might be related to because that's where you sit and read. It's where you take your cup of coffee. It's where you write. Is there a place in your house that is like yours? Like I have a chair and my kids, yes. like it's my chair. Is there a place mm. that you just go, like, this is, I, I feel home when I'm here. I don't have a place, which now yeah. is convicting me to feel like, <clears throat> like I need to go home and make a place. place. <laughs> yeah. You know, honestly, I would probably say, um, I would always say our family room and our kitchen, which are kind of one, you know, like, because that's where we always all are, Spend like together. together. That's where we're together when we're watching a movie together. Or I would have said that, but a few years ago, we redid our room and um the way that th this house is is there was like an office kind of attached to the room so that was always my space where I was like i'm sitting down to you know do work or whatever um but now it's like there's a little fireplace in there and our kids like camp out in our room with us like if we watch a movie we all snuggle in the bed and that for now is a treasured memory i was just you gonna know? say isn't it something when you're like your older kids mm. come and just not yes. crawl into bed like to nap but just to cuddle just come they just end it just to talk and to be you. yes it's very special uh -huh. Such a gift. my husband would say if i asked him this question he would say it's my bed <laughs> because I have like the old lady yeah. bed. Like I have the straight up, like it can, you know, tilt. Oh, it's so nice. It's the best. It's basically and a will, hospital. It's a glorified I, hospital bed. It's a glorified bed. hospital bed. <laughs> that is what it is. You, you know what? You pay, I admit, wish you pay more just, for that. Yeah, yeah, just no. admit the season of life. The that fact that it has a button and you can be a yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Um, I, I, my guilty pleasure is to get a cup of coffee after the kids have gone yes. and to go back into my room and, you know, er, tell myself gosh, and read my Bible yes. and then like pull out my compu computer and work there for a little bit. That would, yes. that's probably, it's not okay. glamorous. It's just, that no. is where it probably is. Yep. <laughs> okay. So back to the teenage daughter thing for a second. There was a okay. question I wanted to ask and I forgot about it. Um, so the things you say, Sadie, do your homework, yes. clean your room, whatever. Oh, yeah. What did your moms say to you, right? That echoes Ooh. in your mind that, the you know, you laugh things. out now. The same thing. Clean things. your room. Clean your, your room. Clean your room. Clean your room. And I, I, it's funny because we just literally, like I'm talking about three days ago, had a come to Jesus with all of our children. Over, family meeting? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was, it was a family <laughs> meeting. And it was over clean your room. And, mm. and it, that seems so silly. It's such a, you're like, why are we actually having to have a massive sit down, <laughs> come to Jesus family meeting over room cleaning? Yeah. If you would have seen them, if you would have actually seen them. like The they, rooms? The rooms. Uh, uh, <laughs> my one daughter we who have I kids. will, we my, can, we my, my one daughter who yeah, I will yeah. not out right now, but the amount of just, th she had more things on the floor than she even had hanging or mm -hmm. folded in a, in a drawer or in her closet. Plus pa papers from like their whole papers thrown oh. everywhere, food containers yeah, the food everywhere, containers silverware. Cool. I'm like, why is there a bowl here and the spoon is all the way across the room <laughs> under your window? Like wh why, why, what were you doing with your spoon under your window? Like <laughs> what is happening? And for us, it was just this matter of like, we've, we've, we've said, we've said these things, we've laid these, and I'm like, I went back and I said, oh my gosh, I am my mother. Yeah. I've literally become my mother, which is a compliment because I love you, mom. Sure. But but literally, I was like, when I was a child, I shared a room with my sister, and it was a quarter of the size of this room, and the closet was uh -huh. like, not, like I didn't have a walk-in closet, or a, like I had 
a closet that was literally like the span of my yeah. arms and I had to share it with my sister. And it was like, and I realized, well, it's probably we had to keep it clean because you, otherwise mm. you couldn't mm -hmm. like, Move. but it's, it's cleaning the room is it's a the same. conversation. I mean, why are there clothes on the floor? Yep. Why is your room always a mess? Yep. Why, oh. why can't you put your dishes in the dishwasher? Why can't you put That's your what dishes? my mom said. Why, why if you yeah. can walk your dish to the sink, why can't you just walk it to the dishwasher? Yes. And I now say that same thing. Same thing. But well, I, I also have more compassion for my mom because yes. I realized, you know, when you're a kid, you don't understand that all those little micro things are adding up yes. to like this big macro list for mom. And the spoon just pushes it over. Right. It's, it's, it's like, like it's, not it's, like it's just a spoon, thing, but it's that one right? thing that yeah. you're just it's, like, that's it. <laughs> To the yeah. family room. <laughs> it's a spoon that will bring a your mama. spoon bring to the family spoon. room. <laughs> <laughs> That's very well, true. what I wanted to do was paint some hope <laughs> for everyone, paint some hope for moms to go, <sighs> right? Oh, yes. We've been all oh, been, somehow we turned out to be like yes. functioning adults yes. and yeah. right, we're fine in life. So just yes. paint some hope for it. Well, for it's funny because now the conversations are different than I think about things that our parents never had mm. to think about. Okay. You know, when I was a child, my, my parents or my mom would always be like, get off the phone. Get off, like yeah. I would, there was, there was a phone that they put an extra long cord on so I could take the phone mm -hmm. from my parents' room That's and great. drag it across the hall mm -hmm. and be able to sit in your own room and talk on the phone and be like, you've been on the phone with Mia for 25 <laughs> minutes. It's time to get off. Mia was my best friend. <laughs> and, um, but now I'm like, oh, like, okay, I'm putting a time limit on how much you can be on Instagram mm -hmm. or I'm putting a time limit on what, and it's just now it's such a different, Concern Things and coming into your kids' minds and hearts and rooms that oh. like oh, it's not Mia. It's no, right. It's so well, now it's a full time thing. job. Yes, where like our yes. parents, it was concentrated, right? Like the, mm -hmm. in the sense of it was more of like yeah. I have to monitor your time on the phone. Yeah, That's in my home, I can see you. I can I actually know what's happening. I can hear the conversation. Yes. Like so much, it it required the same parenting, but I think the the access was more limited. So our yeah. kids are dealing with it, you know, 24-7. Totally which means as moms, we're thinking about it way more. It's like a constant stress, yes. right? I think it is. I think it's like a low, you know, they talk about a messy house, yeah. <laughs> right? That yeah. creates like low level stress. That's just kind of like white noise in the background. For us and our kids. For us, for yes. our kids. And I do think that that's something that you're constantly having. You know, I think my one of the practices that I've had to like really lean into is when I can't shake the Holy Spirit is like just making me think about one thing that I need to be checking on with a kid. And when that begins to reiterate itself in my spirit, then that's the thing that I begin to kind of like lean into. Yes. But you can't you can't helicopter it 24 seven. No. You can't even if you want to, even if you no. try, you still can't. It's impossible. So I think there is this this. Um, requirement of us in parenting in this age to have to really cultivate a relationship where we listen to the Holy Spirit yes. because never before have we needed the parenting guidebook of the Holy Spirit than I think at any other point because there's so much that's unseen and unheard and unknown and we have to have that supernatural um, wisdom from him to know when to kind of dig in more, when to let go, when to press the subject, when to go like, okay, I've got to, I've got to hand a little bit of this off to the Holy, or over to the Lord. But it's tricky. I think every mom is struggling with the and balance. To, and to pour into who they are, mm -hmm. not just modifying behavior. Yes. Right? Yes. So what's something that maybe you have said to your daughters mm -hmm. or, you know, a combination of like that, that like you want to pour into who they are, mm -hmm. right? So that helps them navigate with a tender heart towards God or, right? Like, mm. I don't know what that is for, I don't want to put yeah. anything on the table, but if you, yeah. if you were, if you could like open their little hearts and pour something in, like what, what do you wow. hope you have poured in or what would you want to pour in? Um, you know, it's even funny, even now when we, all three of my girls are so radically different from each other. I mean, even the twins are like a Grand Canyon apart in the things. But when when I boil it down to, okay, this is circumstantially what your situation looks like right now, and this is what yours looks like, and this is what yours looks like. But then when I boil down to what's the root 
it's identity. Mm -hmm. Every time, it's identity. You it's feeling you feeling, if, I, if I'm talking to one of them about this insecurity, it's she doesn't feel worthy or loved or enough in this way. Or, and it might be completely different than her sister or this person, but I can always boil it down to this is actually down, comes down to your identity. And when if I'm pouring into my girls, it's constantly pouring in who they are and whose they are. And that idea of um, nobody else gets, gets to define if you're enough. That, that isn't even, the definition of that isn't even up for debate. Mm -hmm. You are enough because he is enough. You are, on our own, none of us are. But because of Jesus, he put something in you that actually is enough. And I think that that constant question of their identity, especially in the, in the all of us, I remember struggling with that. Mm -hmm. So these are a tale as old as time. All, all of these issues are not new issues, but how to navigate them in this world that we're living in is a completely different thing. The pressures that they're facing, um, the just even in school, you're just like, wait, <laughs> the, kids, the kids these days are are different. <laughs> like, like the things they say or the pressures that they feel or the, I, I can't fathom because I remember how hard it was for me when I was 15 or 16. I can't imagine what it would be like in this day and age. So I think that constantly pouring in to their identity and then also um, listening a lot. You have to create space your kids are not, some kids are just not going to want to talk to you. They're just not going to want to. I'm grateful that two of my three are talkers, but my other one's an internal processor. Mm -hmm. So it's, you have to create space for her to have a conversation. And I realize if I'm always talking at her, then I'm never going to get from her how she's really feeling. Mm -hmm. If I put her on the spot, she's just going to be like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. But if I just go to her room and I just climb on her bed, I put myself in her space and just eventually she begins to talk and open up. And I think sometimes as parents, we're so busy and we're so caught up in what's happening in our world. One of the most important things you can do is give your kids your time. That's a good word. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, right? being available as much as we can because sometimes they're not ready. Right. Usually they're ready at 10 o'clock at night exactly when you're ready right. to go to bed. Yes. When yes. you're like, this is, this. Out. <laughs> we, we were in the same room four hours ago. Yes. That's right. But when they're ready, right, you yes. have to be ready. I, right? I, I, if I could reiterate that, I think so often we want parenting to be convenient. Yes. Whoa. Like when we want to deal with the yes. issue, when we want to address the issue, when we think it's pertinent, when we think it's like demanding of parenting yes. in that moment. And I just, the more I do this, the more I like, I'm forced to have to like look at parenting as it is just as sacrificial and inconvenient as anything else that's kingdom minded. It actually has to be that I'm willing to be quiet when I want to say something that I'm willing to show up when I actually want to fall asleep, when I am exhausted and I have nothing left to pour out. That's, that's the, the, the very moment that you want to just be like, we'll get to it tomorrow, or it's not that big of a deal. And, and God is gracious in that if we don't, it's fine. Like it's still going to come up when it needs to, but there's so much about it that is, it's anti-cultural. Mm -hmm. It's not about me time and mommy time and how do I get all of my needs met? It's actually how do I in this season lay down my life and serve these yeah. kids? That is not how we want to look at parenting. Mm -hmm. We most of the time want to look at it through a, a lens of how do I make this work to my, to my benefit? And it's really actually how do I look like the kingdom of God for these kids in, and, and show up when it's hard. And you know, like, um, I'm, I'm thinking about my own parents in this moment, um, and I know so many people who will be listening to this conversation will be like, that was not my story. I did not have that. I did not get that. That's the beautiful thing about Jesus is that he actually makes things new and, right. and can start something with you. But um, my parents just celebrated 66 years of marriage. Um, they have five kids. They have 14 grandkids and now nine great grandkids. Mm -hmm. And um, every single person has made a decision to follow Jesus. 
Um, and when I, when I look at that, they all came to visit in the summer and I looked at my parents and I looked at, actually it tears me up, but I looked at generations of people sitting around them and all of us singing about the faithfulness of God. And I thought, neither one, like my dad came from a long legacy of ministry, but my mom didn't. Her, she ended up being raised by her grandmother. Her parents got divorced, remarried, divorced again. And this is back in the 40s. I mean, nobody did that, right? It was, she came from real difficulty, but she made a decision and that decision changed the course of generations that came after my mom. And when I think about how she parented, she didn't project her lack in her life. I never felt like my mom was, so often I don't even realize I'm projecting yeah. things on my kids. Mm -hmm. um, and when I re think back, I'm like, my mom really submitted her life to the Holy Spirit in a way that she she parented us all differently according to our needs, not according to what was easy for her or convenient okay. for her or worked for her. It wasn't a blanket parenting. It was an individual parenting. And now I can look back and go, look at the fruit of that. Yeah. And so I just think for anyone listening, don't be like, oh, I didn't have that and now I can't be that. You can be that. Like I feel like my mom is living proof that you can make a different decision that will impact generations to follow after you. Man. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't come from, I mean, my, anybody that knows my story, it comes, I come from a very long line of brokenness, addiction, um, divorce. I mean, you name it, it's kind of in my family lineage. And when my husband and I got married, one of my biggest fears about parenting was like, even though my mom and my dad did a great job, they didn't have a lot of, um, they didn't have a biblical reference for their own parenting. They were first generation Christians. Yeah. So they were really just trying to survive. And I remember going into parenting and feeling like, I don't know how to do this in a way that feels like it'll have yeah. lasting fruit. Like that's really scary to me. And what that has looked like for me and my husband is actually doing hard things. Mm -hmm. It's doing the hard things to heal my own pain and my own past and my own stuff. It's being in a church community and surrounding yourself mm -hmm. with people, even when that feels hard and you don't want to be vulnerable and you don't want to let people in. It's, it's making choices that are often uncomfortable. It's yeah. also being really quick to say you're sorry. I think yeah. that if I could yeah. say anything to a mom watching right now, there is nothing more powerful than a mom yes. who can both repent to the Lord yes. in front of their children and repent to them. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think there is more power wrapped up in that than probably almost anything else that we can do in parenting. Yeah. It shows humility. It shows that we are under authority. It shows that we actually all still make mistakes. That is why we need the grace and the mercy of Jesus. And just because I'm 43 and they're 13, we are still having to walk out the same relationship with the Lord, even though it's 30 years apart, you know? And I think that that probably has broke down more dysfunctional cycles and yeah. built healthier cycles in my parenting probably than anything else that I've done because I still make lots of mistakes. Um, but I do think that my kids would say, but my mom is quick to say she's sorry and means it and not just to us, but... I've shared with them when I've made mistakes that had nothing to do with them. I've yeah. shared with them when I've hurt a friend or I've done something that I regretted and, and had to say, I've had to deal with the, like the Lord's been dealing with me. The Lord's been correcting me. Mm -hmm. And this is why this, you know, da, 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 da. And so, you know, our parents, I don't think necessarily knew they had permission to do that. Right. Um, but I think that that is the beauty mm -hmm. of with every generation, hopefully there is more wisdom um, and, and more ability to just take that next step further in parenting that is more like Christ than maybe the generation before. I hope my kids do it better than yeah. me. Yeah. yeah, I think we all say that, so. I mean, that's how your kids um, encounter the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right? Yes. Because they encounter repentance, they encounter yes. forgiveness. Like that's, right. that, that's when they encounter the gospel, yes. Yes. not just in teaching, but in, right? They, I, they encounter it in. I can't be my kid's savior. <clears throat> And most of the time, I think as moms, we have this underlining thing that's wired in us to yeah. want to do all the saving. 
I want to save you from pain. I want to save you from heartache. I want to save you from tragedy. I want to save you from being bullied, being insecure, not, I, I want to save you from all the heartache. And a couple of years ago, the Lord just began to convict me and he goes, if you're doing all the saving, then what, what am I here for? And that is a really hard thing to let go and truly do what we talk about is like really our kids are not our own, mm -hmm. but man, it's hard to forget it when you're walking it out day in, hour by hour, year by year, but actually surrender, surrendering them and saying, you're right. Like, cause if I'm doing all the saving, then where does the gospel mm -hmm. come into their life? and change them the way that it changed me when I was 19. Yeah, we're, we can't save our kids, but we can battle for our kids. Yes. And I feel like I've gone through seasons where I feel like, yes. you know, sometimes it feels like I'm fighting with my kids, yes. right? <laughs> but the greater battle is when we battle for yes. our kids. Fight for, for them. them. Right? Yes. For them. Yes. And that's time in prayer. I mean, I can literally, yes. when one, of my, one of my sons who's now a pastor wow. was in his rebellious season and, and I would be in church just weeping mm. for him. And I would look over and like, are you ready? And he, you know, and like, okay, then we fight for yes. you. Then we pray, yes. right? Like, so yes. I'm not going to settle for fighting with my kids. Right. I'm going to battle for my yes. kids. And just I a peek down the road, right, for, for you guys, because <laughs> my kids are older than yours. But um, I had the realization one day, and this is the good stuff, right? This is where the battle, the blessing comes after yes. the battle. Like, all of my kids love Jesus. Yes. yes. They all love each other yes. and they love my husband and I. And that just like, right? I, I sat and I'm like, whoa, because in so many family dynamics, ours may be in the past. Yeah, that's not always the case. That's not, there's yeah, something that's right. that's right. But the good stuff, the blessing yes. and why we fight for our kids is so yes. someday they'll love Jesus, yes. Yes. right? They'll love each other yeah. and they love us as parents. Cause like that's, yes. you just said, that's the richness. That is the good, that's, that's that the is good it. stuff of life. That's it. I don't know what else. I mean, 